Welcome to Current Affairs at Copenhagen Suborbitals. What's happening right now in the Amateur Rocket Project, with the goal of launching a human being into space and bringing him safely back to Earth? Hosted by Jakob Larsen. Hello everyone and uh, welcome to this little episode. Um, I'd really like to introduce Alex, he's one of our electronics people and uh, he brought something very spectacular f uh, for us uh, today. So uh, I'm just going to hold it up here, but Alex, uh, this looks really neat, but what are we looking at? Yeah, well, uh, this is uh, an engineering prototype for the uh, video downlink system that we are building for the Nexo 2 flight this summer. And uh, we have made this uh, as a proof of concept mm -hmm. and also to develop the software and do a lot of functional testing. Mm -hmm. So this is not the flight hardware, this is just something we use for testing. Okay. So what do we have here on the board? Um, I mean, yeah. if it's a camera system, we must be looking at something. Yes, uh, so what you see here is uh, we have uh, three cameras uh, and they are made out of uh, Raspberry Pi uh, and uh, the corresponding camera module. Mm -hmm. I think everybody knows them. <laughs> and uh, we have three of them because we intend to fly three cameras and you can see one extra, which is a spare one, mm -hmm. just for testing. Mm -hmm. And they are connected to a main computer, which is a little more powerful and what this computer does is to take the three video streams from the three cameras, multiplex them together into one data stream and uh, transmit it to the, or send it to the transmitter. Okay. Well, if we, uh, we take a look at these, uh, I mean, it's an engineering prototype, mm -hmm. but at some point, some of this hardware or something similar will, will have to go into the rocket. So um, we, we brought forth here a little, uh, a little engineering drawing as well of, of uh, Nexo 2. And uh, I just wanted you to try and, and give us an impression of, of three cameras this time. Uh, so where are we going to put them and how are we going to use them? Yeah. So uh, one of the cameras is going to be up here uh, at the, in the parachute compartment and it will be looking up, something like that. Uh, and it will, uh, the purpose with that is to capture the parachute deployment. Uh, All the reefing systems. Reefing, uh, yes, everything to see. Uh, both if it works and if something goes wrong to have a, a reference mm -hmm. for later. And uh, the second camera is going to look out on uh, to the side of the rocket towards the horizon. Mm -hmm. It will have a view something like this or one of the sides. We are not sure yet which. And that will simply show the, the horizon uh, view. Give some really good pictures. Yes, hopefully, cameras. yes. And right. uh, finally, the last one, which I think will be the coolest one, mm -hmm. is the one at the bottom of the rocket, which will be looking down, something like this. So this will film uh, uh, the ascent or the descent uh, looking down at the uh, exhaust or fire or and also the launch platform on the way up. Yeah, we should hopefully see that one become very small very quickly. Yes. <laughs> Okay, well, this is a bit of a, an upgrade from, from Nexu 1. Uh, Indeed, Nexu yeah. 1 only had one camera. Indeed, uh, Nexu 1 had a camera which corresponds to this one looking up. And mm. that was uh, because it was a different uh, uh, technology. It was an integrated camera with camera and transmitter in one module. Uh, and, but this time we have better time to do the engineering so we can do the, all the necessary work to have several cameras transmitted as one uh, radio signal. Okay, well, this is going to be, be really cool. Um, there is also this, we're very happy with these uh, modular concepts. So I heard some rumors that this is just, this is not just only something we made up for the, uh, the Nexo 2 rocket. What's the story there? Correct. So uh, the system we are building here is uh, actually, it's not, not, nothing we have invented. We are taking actually the a standard called DVB-S2, which mm -hmm. is the standard used for uh, satellite television broadcasting. And uh, there we indeed have uh, several channels sent as one signal, as one multiplex. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly the same we are doing, just on a smaller and cheaper scale. We get uh, three cameras. The three cameras are going to be multiplexed mm -hmm. and sent as one uh, signal on a frequency, which is actually going to be received by a, off-the-shelf satellite receiver. So, uh, and that's a good idea because uh, 
d creating a receiver for digital television is much more difficult than creating a transmitter as it's because you have to recover the signal uh, extract it from the noise and uh, do a lot of heavy calculations so if we can use a standard off the shelf receiver mm -hmm. which already has all these functionalities mm -hmm. built in and is good at it then it will be very good that's a nifty little thing just taking satellite commercial off the shelf pieces exactly. and then just using it for a receiver end Yes, and basically what you will experience is that you can change channels on the satellite. <laughs> of course, we will do it differently because we will uh, stream it on the network for both uh, live streaming mm -hmm. and also for the mission control. But uh, it's basically the same that when you sit in front of the television and changing channels. Okay, really neat. So we, what, uh, of course, the, there's going to be a question. What resolution can we expect to get down from, from the rocket? Yeah, so... Uh, we aim for uh, 720p at uh, around 30 frames per second. It's not decided yet because we have to discuss and think about what we need. Because, For example, the camera filming the parachute may not need to be widescreen format or some of the others. And then we can... We have uh, something like 10 megabits per second bandwidth on this flight. And so we have to divide it... Uh, in a mm. clever way. I guess this is also one of the very good reasons for an engineering prototype. Exactly, so. because and uh, I'm using this, I'm playing with it, testing with it, and we are going to build a flight version in parallel. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, the, the components are very cheap, uh, mm -hmm. uh, so they don't cost a lot of money. Mm. Well, there is a, we, we have a small gap here, because mm -hmm. all the, you mentioned the receiver equipment, uh, but uh, how do we get that, uh, that camera stream out of the rocket? The, well, yeah, so uh, one thing that is missing on this setup is, uh, is the actual transmitter. Mm -hmm. And I have uh, one of them here. Mm -hmm. it's, we don't know if we are going to use this one. This is one of the candidates. And uh, this is a, also an off-the-shelf module. What it does is it has a digital connection, a USB connection. So that will be connected to this main computer. Mm -hmm. Gets the digital data stream in, and it creates a radio frequency out. It's a low-power uh, signal. So we are going to need an extra uh, power amplifier on the rocket, but uh, that's basically it. And mm -hmm. so, of course, we have the antennas, which is another um, update. Well, the antenna we're going to take, yeah. uh, save that. That's a special one. Yeah. We're going to save that for, uh, mm -hmm. for another episode. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for the insight, Alex. It's, uh, it's really cool. Yep. For further information about Copenhagen Suborbitals and our mission, Please go to our YouTube channel as well as our homepage www.corpsart.com. As we're funded entirely by sponsors and donors, we need the support of our many fans to reach our goal of manned amateur spaceflight. You can support us by contributing through the support page. <laughs>